Hey guys, Red Pen Mining here. Welcome to the Crypto Miner Bros YouTube channel. This is an exclusive video on how to set up your Ice River KS1 ASIC miner. I will show you guys the whole setup process from beginning to end as well as talk about the profitability of this KS1 as well. So let's get started. First off, you are going to receive, if you bought one of these Caspa ASIC miners, there is great foam padding for the KS1 specifically. Very thick foam padding here to protect your uh, KS1, so the packaging was really good. Then, once you take it out of the box, you're gonna be presented the ASIC miner like this, okay? So most likely, you're gonna wanna be mining uh, with this in a location that is gonna have good enough airflow because this is gonna provide a decent amount of heat. So this does mine at about one terahash at about 600 to 630 watts, depending on how much the fans are moving, the power. Which I will show you in the settings how to change the fan speeds in case noise is a concern, but I will also show you where to look at for the temperatures as well. Okay, another thing to consider, once you have an ASIC miner like this, which requires a C13 uh, to C14 power cable, okay, this will only run on 240 volt power, not 120 volts, so it will not work on a typical North American plug like this. You're gonna need infrastructure to run something like this, okay? So 240 volt power, consult a certified electrician to get that wired into your house. Then you will need a power distribution unit. In this case, I have a 240 volt 30 amp PDU, which plugs into my 30 amp outlet. And then you will also need a C13 to C14 power cable, which we're gonna plug this in right now. So just like setting this up, we're also gonna be uh, plugging it into the power plug in the ASIC miner like so, okay? Okay, so there are numerous ways to get the IP address for the ASIC miner, the KS1 that you just plugged in. And in this case, I'm using a free software called Advanced IP Scanner. You can alternatively also log into your home router. You turn this thing on, power button, and you can see it's turning on now and it's drawing a little bit of power. All right, so next step, once it is on, you're gonna wanna go into the computer and a laptop or something that we're gonna get the IP address, okay? So let's do that right now. And you can generally see the latest DHCP lease uh, IP for whatever was just plugged in. So in this case, the KS1. So we can see it here. Looks like for me, this is 10.100.100.145. So you take that IP address, go to a web browser, type that into the browser at the top. Can I just show you guys here? Press enter, and it should come up with the login screen for the KS1. So now, the name and password. So for the Ice Rivers, the login for these are admin, okay? And the password is 12345678. That's the default username and password. You're gonna log in um, using Google Chrome. It's, it might says change, change password, which you can do by going to user setting tab on the left here. You can ch change the current password one to eight and then change the new password. So definitely do that. But you're gonna be presented, once you first log in, the web GUI of the ice server. So very easy now. Now the next step, you're gonna to wanna to change the mining setting, okay? This is where you're gonna enter in your pool configuration. So the pool, and then your wallet, and worker name, and the password. So let's do this straight in the beginning. If you are a new miner, and you wanna understand uh, which mining pool you wanna to mine to, there are many different mining pools out there. So we're on miningpoolstats.stream slash caspa. You can go to this website here. You can see that there are many different mining pools, but one of the main fundamental things with crypto mining is that you wanna keep it decentralized. So in this case, you know, try not to mine to the highest pool that has most of the hash rates already. F2 pool, castle pool, hum pool, TW pool, pool in. These already have pretty high hash rates. If you can, Keep it, you know, decentralized. Mine on different pools that have lower hash rates. So in this case, let's just do an example, two miners. Okay, if you wanna mine the two miners, most likely, well, most of the mining pools uh, have a how to start. So in this case, uh, there might be here, how to start, and they have all the different 
mining pools for your Ice River KS1s, KS2, KS3, KS3Ls as well. Uh, so in this case, we're going to take this one for the KS1 because we are setting up a KS1. So we're going to highlight this mining pool here, copy that, go back to the web interface of the Ice River. You're going to paste that into the pool address here. Make sure you have Stratum plus TCP here. Um, you notice that I already had it in there, but that's okay. Next, you'll want to get your Caspa wallet address. So in this case, there are many different Caspa wallets out there. There's the mobile wallet, desktop wallet, there's a CLI, command line wallet. There's also third-party apps, Zalcor, Tangent, OneKey, Change. Um, in this example, um, you guys can in install the ones that you are most comfortable with. For me personally, I use Zalcor, so I can show you guys an example here. So I've already been mining with this KS1 for a while uh, into this address. And so go through the process of installing the wallet, get your wallet address, and you wanna get your receiving wallet address for Caspa. So this is what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna hit copy. We're gonna go back to the web interface and we're gonna paste that in into here. Now, it's gonna see that you wanna add in the worker name as well. So make sure you're selected all the way to the right. You're gonna go type in period and then type in any name you want for the worker name. So in my case, I just do KS1. So period KS1, that is what is gonna uh, differentiate on the mining pool that is your worker. Then password is gonna be X, or it can be one, two, three, whatever number you want, but I just do generally X or one, two, three. Now, the next part here, it says hardware configuration, fan speed. So depending on your environment, this is where you wanna change the fan speed. So out of the box, it's gonna be 100, and I can show you guys Example right now, it's going to be very loud. Okay. So once you save it, you will hear this thing ramp up to a hundred fan speed. Extremely loud. Okay. And the power consumption goes up to 600 and I think 60 or 50 watts. All right. So just a disclaimer there, but this runs pretty cool. Um, obviously at 100% fan, but let's go back to the computer. You can see, operation succeeded. Uh, but now, let's change it back to 30, because my environment is much cooler. Make sure you click on this check mark here, very important, and hit save. Okay, and you'll notice that the fan speed noises have come down, all right? So very important. Um, also, you wanna check at, if you go back to home, you'll want to take a look at the temperatures. Now, I've heard uh, that the max temperatures that this can mine to is about 70 to 75 degrees Celsius. So just make sure you uh, take note of the temperatures here. And as you are mining, as you are changing the fan speed, if a noise is concerned for you, then um, you, know, you want to make sure you don't go, I'd say past 55. Don't go past 60 degrees Celsius or something. So try to stay below that. G KS1 generally, you know, stays cool, but it also depends on your environment. Okay, so yeah, after you save your settings, which the save button is over here, uh, save all that, save all that, uh, it should already start mining after a couple minutes. And yeah, you can see here, past 11 minutes, I'm already starting to mine here. And yeah, that's it. That's basically it. And then you're off to the races to start mining. Now, if you're mining on two miners, just an example, and you got your wallet address here, okay, you can take your wallet address, receiving address, and also paste it into the mining pool to see the stats. So in this case, you can see the KS1 on the mining pool. I've already mined, so you can see how much you're mining every 24 hours, right? I'm getting about $42 a day. And yeah, now let's talk about the profitability for anyone that's curious. Now, I am on hashrate.no, okay? So if anyone decides to purchase one of these, and are considering purchasing one, you can see the, the current profitability of these, uh, which changes all the, t all the time, by the way. But you can see KS1 right now makes about $47 a day. KS2 is 95, KS3L is 238, KS3 is 381. But just be mindful, as more and more of these come online, the profitability dips down. But I'll, that also depends on the price of Caspa, if it goes up or down or not. Uh, very, it really depends. So hopefully you guys understand that. Okay, guys, that's it. That's how you set up your Ice River KS1. Thank you to Crypto Miner Bros. Uh, this is an exclusive video uh, on their channel. Hopefully you guys enjoy. Hopefully uh, that was easy to set up. I mean, it's pretty simple. Pretty, It's pretty much the same setting up with other ASIC miners. Uh, it's the same process. So anyways, that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Links down below if you guys are interested in purchasing.
a iServer uh, KS1. All right, so I'll see you on the next one. Have a good one. Peace out. Oh, and take a look. The power consumption is much less now, 574 since we went down to about 30 fan speed. All right, so pretty cool, pretty cool.